seven different interviews of people all over the world, mainly using Skype phone calls, and we've done two face-to-face. -face. We've got two main contexts that they fall into, which is disasters and sort of your more everyday life. So Joanne's going to go through her first interview. Yeah, my first interview was more on disaster response. They were actually very unprepared when the disaster struck, and a lot of the response when it struck, um, happened over mobile, phone calls, SMS, Facebook, that updated each other and the volunteers as to where the response would be needed and by who. And it also helped direct the action that the volunteers would take in order to respond most effectively and efficiently. However, the challenge there was actually getting to track after the response, um, like track progress and results um, and how to actually measure them afterwards. Two other participants were from Mexico City, that is famous by earthquakes. And uh, the, the, something that we found between those participants is that they were in social groups, for example in a conference, but at the same time isolated because they don't know deeply the other person. Uh, during the moment of the earthquake, the priority is to be safe. Technology will be used after the earthquake in order to communicate with your most closest ones, like family or friends. Uh, but this, their mobile technology, the network will be collapsing because all the people are trying to contact their beloveds at the same time. So uh, some certain technologies, like radio technologies, uh, were going to be able to be used because not all the people has radio uh, in comparison to mobile. And uh, people in the moment of the uh, disaster is trying to know what they can do in order to be safe. And there is an interesting point there, there is a deep isolation, uh, not a lot of knowledge about what to do in a disaster. And technology during the moment of disaster can still be used because it's not saturated the, the network. Um, and the last two interviews were from people who had both been to Africa. One is a humanitarian who travels 26 countries in Africa, and the other is a doctor um, based in Malawi with her husband who's also a doctor. So they both spoke about issues with um, not being able to access the technology, um, not even being able to access electricity for days at a time, and the effort of going through and traveling days to get to a market and then finding out that it actually has no food and they can see where better information would help them with that especially in the medical industry being able to get um, quicker results through technologies currently they're trying to use sms technology but it hasn't been introduced um, very well yet it's still quite manual still taking quite a few weeks to get urgent results and the interviews think that um, this info will best come from the, the leaders of each tribe uh, that we listened to and responded to the most. Okay. <laughs> See you later.